You're watching free content from Digital Tutors, the world's largest CG training library. Enjoy the tutorial and visit digitaltutors.com to find thousands of videos streaming in HD. In this lesson, we'll learn about some of the similarities between animal anatomy and human anatomy by examining their basic bone structures. Alright, so I've got the project file for Lesson 2 open here if you want to follow along with me. Now, I think it's important to let you know that if this is your first endeavor into anatomy, you've never had any experience drawing human anatomy, I would strongly encourage you to first start with human anatomy before you venture into the world of animal anatomy. Human anatomy is something we're all familiar with. We all look at it every day in the mirror, and even though individuals vary in size and shape, the core elements that make up those individuals are all going to be the same. The same bone structure and the same musculature. Now when we're dealing with animals, those things change vastly between different species. So it's a good idea for you to get a grasp on drawing the human anatomy first because it'll give you something to base your new knowledge of animal anatomy on. So uh, now what I've got here are a couple of really quick, quick, simple sketches. And we have here a quadruped on the left, no specific species. And then we have a human here on the right that is sort of down on all fours. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the approach that we're going to first begin learning about drawing animals two-dimensionally from a profile and then we're going to venture into seeing them three-dimensionally. So uh, what we need to first know about animals is that many of their forms relate directly to the same forms on the human body. There's several of the same pieces. Now only the proportions and sometimes the location of these pieces are going to be different. So let me go ahead and bring in some colors here so we can kind of compare and contrast. Now obviously we have both a head and a neck as you can see here on the human and the animal. Now the orange shape is going to be the rib cage and we have that on both as well. Now let's take a look at the legs for the quadruped here. These front legs are going to be the, called the fore legs and these back legs are going to be the hind legs. Now obviously a quadruped is going to walk on all four of or all four of these legs rather whereas a human is meant to walk upright on only two legs. Now there are some differences in the way these front arms or forelegs are laid out because of this. Let's take a look here at the shoulder blade, this green shape right here. Notice on the human it's mounted more on the back side of the rib cage. Whereas on the quadruped, it seems like it's hanging off almost the front side of the rib cage, or even hanging down from the spine itself. Now this directly relates to those legs, those four legs are intended to support more weight. They're intended to be a part of everyday movement. Whereas the humans are not. Now again, let's go ahead and take a look at both the forelegs and the hind legs here. We have the shoulder blade and the pelvis, or the hip bone, and you can see we have both of those two bones here in the human anatomy as well. Now, we mentioned here the difference between the forelegs and our arms, but let's take a look at the number of segments that we have here in the forelegs. If we count the shoulder blade here, we would have one, two, three, four, and then we have this little toe piece right here. Well, let's go ahead and count the human's arm here, including the shoulder blade. We would have one, two, three, and four, plus the fingers. So you can see here that there are the same number of segments in both the animal anatomy as the human anatomy on that foreleg. Now, when we look at that foreleg here, there's one big difference being right around here. Let's take a look at what would be the toe and the hand on the human. You can see here that animals quadruped animals for the most part are toe walkers, meaning all their weight is placed on what would be the toes, whether it be the front or the back. Now when we look here at the human leg on the other hand, humans are heel walkers. We put our weight on not only the toes but this bone segment right here that makes up our foot, where animals do not. Now again, just as with the forelegs, if we look at the hind legs of our quadruped here, again we're going to see the same number of segments. Counting the pelvis, we have four plus a toe. In the human, again, four plus a toe. So you can see here there's many similarities between your basic animal anatomy 
and human anatomy. You can see the same basic parts here, and you can see here that we have the same number of segments in both the forelegs and the hind legs. Now let's talk for just a moment here about sort of the joints. Being that we have the same number of segments in those legs, it would only make sense that we have the exact same joints. They just look a little bit different on an animal. You can see here between this bone and the shoulder blade we have the shoulder and we have that exact same thing on the human anatomy. On the animal we have an elbow as well as a wrist just like on the human and when we look here at the hind leg we have a hip, a knee, and an ankle. Again, just like a human. Now since we're talking about the joints between these segments, let's talk about the mobility of these joints just for a moment here. On a human we have some of these joints, for example the shoulder and even the wrist that have a wide range of movement that are available to them. The animals on the other hand, that's not necessarily the case. So there's one really good rule of thumb to live by when it comes to this information here. Let me go ahead and just make a new layer over here and I'm going to kind of draw out to the right here, or the left rather. And we're just going to kind of mimic the direction of movement here. Notice there is sort of a zigzag pattern. So if I just hold down my shift key, I'm going to draw that zigzag pattern in here. Just start that a little lower. See if we can't match that up pretty well. There we go. And that last little short line would be the toe, but you can see this definite zigzag pattern. It's going to allow this fore, excuse me, fore, foreleg to actually collapse, uh, sort of like an accordion here. Now I know that this joint right here is extended, but this joint would actually move in this direction here. So you, you can see how that accordion would collapse. Now the hind leg is going to work the exact same way. Again, we have that accordion shape that's created by the bend in each joint, just like that. Now the two joints that have really the biggest difference between uh, this quadruped and the basic human anatomy are going to be the shoulder and the wrist, being that the human has quite a bit more mobility in both of those two joints, whereas the animal, it's much more linear for those two particular joints. Now let me go ahead and just delete this layer here. All right, great. Now notice here that we have begun talking about animal anatomy based on the skeleton. We're starting from the inside out. Now we've started on the inside at the deepest level because the skeleton is going to be the most basic forms that influence the shape of the animal. Everything else is going to stack on top of that, whether it be muscles, whether it be tissues, whether it be fats, whatever it is, all of that other mass is actually layered on top of the skeleton to create the animal's form. So if you're ever attempting to draw an animal and you're having some difficulty, I would always make sure and take a look at what that animal's skeleton looks like before you ever begin drawing it. So uh, what I'd like to do right now is let me go ahead and hide these two examples here. Let me bring in some other examples here. Now these are some animals that you probably can recognize just by looking at the silhouettes. Now all of these animals are fairly different when it comes to the proportions and the scale of the animal, or the size rather. So let me go ahead and bring in some uh, information here as far as the shapes that we've just learned about. Now these are all shapes that we need to be paying attention to when we draw an animal. So you can see here that I've kind of sketched out rough shapes for each of the bones for these animals. And you can see how the proportions vary. You can see how much bigger and thicker, for example, the elephant's bones are compared to, say, for example, this deer down here. And we can see how, really how foreign the anatomy of the giraffe looks just based on the silhouette, but breaking it down into these basic parts, all those basic parts are still there. All the parts we just looked at are there in each one of these four animals. It's just different sizes and proportions that make the animals unique. So uh, now that we know what these basic parts are that we need to pay attention to when drawing animal anatomy, let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. And I'll go ahead and show you a really easy way to simplify these forms into some basic shapes when drawing a profile of an animal.